Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm your host, Jim Dempsey. I would imagine that you are busy with activities, probably preparing for events uh, as well as your normal activities. Uh, hopefully some of you are meeting with major partners and getting opportunities to interface with your partners on a regular basis. That's always so very important when it comes to our development efforts. And it's the spring is one of the best times as we move into just a new fresh start as we move from winter to spring. So I hope you're taking advantage of all those opportunities that are out there. If you aren't calling and thanking your partners regularly, I'd encourage you to do that. It's just a great way to connect with them and it kind of keeps you in the mix with your partner. I don't think there's anything easier to do in development and fundraising than just calling someone and thank them for their gift. Nobody is more satisfied with an organization than someone who just gave and was thanked. So I would highly recommend that for your in for the foreseeable future for you. It'll make a big difference. Well, let's dive into our question of the week this week. Our question of the week is from Matt in Cincinnati, Ohio. And Matt asks, the hotel where I'm doing my event really wants me to use their AV equipment. Should I do that? Well, Matt, thank you so much for your question. And I'll have to say that this is really, really an important element and an important item for me, especially when it comes to events and dinners and activities. I've turned down the Ritz-Carlton in Amelia Island. I've turned down the Hyatt Regency in San Antonio. I have turned down the equipment at the Hotel Del Coronado in San Diego, some of the nicest, most prominent facilities because of concern that their equipment was too old, was not suitable for our needs. And what I mean by that is not, they couldn't handle a combination of speakers, music, and video. What I've found over the years is that many systems that exist in venues were created just for speaking engagements. Most of their individuals who rent space with them are using it for just speakers. When you add video and singing and entertainment to that, most systems are not adequately equipped for that. And then the ones that maybe were equipped, I have found that they are so old and outdated that they have been blown out. I can't tell you how often I've seen those speaker systems and they've told me, oh, these are nice speaker systems and you walk in, you listen, you can tell that a video or a singer just blew out those speakers. And it, it, it's just, they can't, those systems are very expensive. They can't replace that equipment fast enough because they just don't have the money to do it. So many organizations will have dinners, and I've been to all of them, I've run a few of those, that it sounds like you're driving up to a drive-in at McDonald's and all you're hearing is blah, 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 blah. You, you have spent hours, months working on this program and for something as simple as your audio video not coming together will ruin your event. You have put together and crafted a program that you believe everybody will love and enjoy and then all of a sudden they can't hear it or they can't see. I did a, a dinner last spring that so frustrated me that they told me that their spotlights worked. Well, when I showed up, I found out that the spotlight wasn't directed towards the stage. So our guests only saw an image of the person on the stage. We made some makeshift on the spot changes to do some up lights, but frankly, it was not what it was supposed to do. And I was so disappointed. So the, the sound wasn't even that good. 
I, I would not have gone with the system myself, but our local team decided that they wanted to go that direction. And frankly, it was to save a few dollars and it, was, it really didn't pay off. You also want to make sure that when you are doing videos, PowerPoints, or even projecting an image onto the screen, you want to make sure that you have a projector that's got sufficient lumens. I won't get a projector nowadays that doesn't have at least 6,000 lumens. Anything less than 6,000 lumens and you run the risk of not being able to see it crisply, not being able to see it clearly. Many videos today are done in 4K and not having an adequate projector is going to just, it's going to really take away from what you intended to do with your program. And of course, having an internal sound system doesn't help with the projector either so that you can mesh that sound with the video. It just, it's sad, but unfortunately happens all too often. Uh, I don't like to look at the intention of a venue. I like to give them the benefit of the doubt. I like to believe that they're doing the best for us, but frankly, too many venues today are signing with audiovisual companies that are outside vendors that come in, they sign a contract either with that particular property or the chain, and that property or the chain will be getting a lot of money. They'll get a percentage of the revenue from the sales. So their job is to sell those video services. They could care less whether those are great video services. They're pushing those. And of course, the video companies that come in, they'll say they're keeping up to date, but aren't always keeping up to date. They say they're looking out for your best interest, but they are really looking out for their bottom line. You also typically have to pay for a technician to be on site with you at the time. A lot of times they don't understand what your program is. I can't tell you how often I've laid out for technicians with a company. Video goes here, message goes here, singer goes here, and they have messed that up. It's one of the most terrible feelings in the world when someone introduces, at this point I'd like to watch a video, please turn your chairs and let's turn down the lights, and you're sitting in the dark in the audio video company can't get your video started. It's, it, it's why I jokingly say I don't have a lot of hair on the top of my head. Uh, I've had those situations and my hair comes out in clumps. So Matt, I would recommend from your standpoint that you maybe bite the bullet a little bit, uh, although you might be able to get some donated video equipment, but I would say bite the bullet a little bit, spend a little extra money, and make sure that your audio and your video is, is just Top notch, doesn't have to be the best, doesn't have to be the most expensive, but it's good enough that you'll be able to, people will have a good experience that night. So I hope that helps. Well, I also hope that this helped those of you trying to make decisions about audio video for your events. If you enjoyed this video, this broadcast, and enjoyed the Jim and Java program, please click the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of future videos. If you want to follow me on Instagram, you can do so at Jim W. Dempsey. And also, if you want to find out how to raise more money through a major donor appointment, watch this video as well. And I wish you the best as you strive to become fully funded this year. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week and see you in the next video. Take care.